Welcome to another one of my running videos. This one's long overdue, it's something I'd intended to do for quite a while, but I'm just getting around to it now. Uh, what I'm going to do in this video is go through the method I use for cutting up local inbound manifest freights, sorting them into their respective locals, and then uh, running those locals out to their service yards, and uh, then to the industries that uh, need to be serviced. Uh, this method sort of models uh, some prototypical operations, like I use the hump yards to sort and things like that, but uh, at the end of the day, I'm one person trying to run the entire, you know, Mojave subdivision. So it's uh, not entirely prototypical, but should uh, serve you playing single player fairly well. Uh, work probably a little better uh, multiplayer when you have more people to actually cut up trains. Uh, but otherwise, uh, yeah, let's get to it. All right, so to start, uh, everything I do here is going to be in the uh, southwest U.S. region. I have the Cajon subdivision add-on for this. If you do not have that, uh, some of the things I'm talking about, like running around Victor Villiards, uh, you won't be able to do if you only have uh, Mojave and Needles. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. Same principle applies regardless. So in scenarios, I usually start with the busy Barstow scenario because it uh, pre-populates some trains all around uh, the maps and everything. If you just start from scratch, you'll have nothing. Uh, so Busy Barso is a good one. There's also uh, this session, uh, SoCal Populated, available on the depot forums. And it's really cool. Uh, the person who made it went through and populated all the industries, or the vast majority of industries, in the entire Southern California region with rail cars and everything. Uh, so it's another really good... Uh, scenario to run if you want to get into uh, building and running locals. But for now, uh, right now, we're just going to load up Busy Barstow. Alright, so, oops. Uh, let's wait for those to spawn in. This is going to spawn a whole bunch of trains all around the place. So, all the local sorting and everything I do, I do through the Barstow hump yard here. Uh, I build all the trains in Barstow initially, and then I'll send them, I'll either run them straight from Barstow, if they run from Barstow, or I'll send them out to their service yards from Barstow. Uh, you can use the hump yard at uh, Colton, if you want, if you have the Colton add on. I don't. Uh, I'm not building that many trains, so I'm just a lot more familiar with the one at Barstow, so I just use the one at Barstow, uh, especially since most of my inbound manifests are coming from Needles anyway, it would just take them forever to get to the Colton Yard. So I run them from here. Uh, so one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to make sure our game is actually set up to spawn industry tagged locals. And you do that, uh, use Shift F2 to open your uh, AI window, and it'll probably open, you'll see this. Uh, you want to go AI traffic generation, make sure that's on, should be. You can adjust these values in here as you see fit. Uh, spawn points. Uh, I've messed with these a bit, so yours, if it's default, may look a little different. Most of the trains coming in here come from the Needle subdivision. A uh, few might come from Bakersfield, some others might come from Seiko. Uh, but for the most part, coming into Barso, they're going to come from BNSF Needles. So we're going to go train types. And the ones we're concerned with are mixed frame. Those are going to be the trains that have our industry tagged for the rail cars. Just going to go over here. Um, I can't remember if Phoenix uh, LA was a default one or not. Belbar should be a default one. Uh, so this is a manifest rate freight, sorry, coming from uh, Bellin, New Mexico to Barstow, California. And what we're primarily concerned with is tagged for industries. Want to make sure that is selected. And what that's going to do is it's going to tag cars for all the locals set up on these routes. Uh, yeah, I thought I had a custom one in there. I do not. That's fine. Uh, so by default, these are all on the left and grade. That's fine. Um, if everything's off, it means everything's on. As soon as you individually start putting them, so if I just had those three on, that means that these trains would only spawn cars for Lock 53, LS 916J, and RCAL 0041. So uh, if you're only running a few locals, you can pick them and just have them spawn, you know, for the locals you want to run. 
I don't simply because there's no real way to adjust the lengths of the trains. So if you only spawn for like three locals or whatever, you're going to end up with a train coming in with 70 rail cars for three different locals that where the industries only have capacity of, you know, five or ten rail cars type things. So you're going to end up with a lot of cars you really can't do anything with. Uh, although you end up with that this way anyway, but it doesn't really matter. I, I just leave them all on. I don't mess too much with it. Uh, the other thing you want to make sure that's turned off is allow mid-train DPUs. It should be off by default. Leave it shut off. If it's uh, turned on, it'll just make your life a little more difficult because then you got to split and hump the train in two pieces if there's locomotives in the middle of it because you can't hump locomotives. Uh, so I'd spawn that one now, but I just got a spawn on uh, for something down here. So we're just going to go down here. Just get rid of this train. Go away. And if we bring this window back up, so if we just spawn that one in there. So you can see that's an M bell bar. And all these cars will be tagged for industries and local trains. Like Lock 53, MON, it's great. Uh, GRN, uh, Greenwood something, can't remember. Uh, PMT, CORSCM. Uh, you only need to run all of them, so there's ones like here, um, YSBD, these are ones that are running out of San Bernardino. I don't run anything out of San Bernardino, I don't run anything out of West Colton. Uh, so these cars you'll just get trimmed and then deleted, honestly. It's, uh, don't need all those. Uh, I don't think I run the Vuvu Rock trains. That's a Vulcan Rock train. Don't run those. Uh, but yeah, so you should also, like, you shouldn't have locomotives on the tail. And on the front, you should not have any mid train DPUs like this, because that's just really annoying to try and actually do something with. So let's hop back to Barstow. So, uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to empty out our Barstow hump yard. I don't want to use any of these. Uh, you'd have to go back and resort them and everything using my method. So I'm like, it's just just easier. To start from scratch. So we're gonna nuke all these trains. And yeah, this takes a minute. Uh, we're gonna nuke these ones here too. So what I use these tracks for is once I've done my initial sort, because uh, I hold the trains twice, and I'll show you kind of why I do that. Uh, the ones that are ready to go again, uh, either go over here if I need more room in the hump yard, uh, or ones that, uh, you know, may need more trains added. Uh, this over here, this is your departure yard. Uh, this is where I put trains that are ready to head out. Uh, and so you might want to clear these out too. Uh, you can leave these trains in here if you want, or actually get them set up to head out. Doesn't really matter. Uh, but this is where I put all the trains that are actually ready to head out. Um, and eventually I find I will actually use all eight of these tracks. Uh, here's another local coming in here. Uh, let's see where this one's being routed. It's fine. Uh, this one here is not really tagged in any way that I want to use because, again, it's got industry tags, but it does not have any local train tags, so we're probably just going to end up deleting that train when it comes in. Another thing I'll show you is uh, just a couple of little ways you can make the AI work for you, like moving trains back and forth. It's uh, The AI I'm running it is kind of basic. Trains will just drive forward and then stop when they uh, encounter a signal against them or a switch thrown against them. The fact that they stop when switches are thrown against them is actually kind of useful because you can use it to move trains from one end of the yard to the other and things like that. So, and while well, I'm humping trains too, waiting, I'll uh, you know pull up this thing here and where's that one's going to uh, Fort Worth. Uh, let me final execute. Yep, get out of here. You can just keep going, no care. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'll get those trains moving. So, uh, another thing I suggest is, uh, don't try and run all the locals. Uh, if I pull up the no switch list, uh, it's one of these buttons. Left control L. 
pulls up your industry configuration window and you can sort here by ind by uh, local freight. It's easier to tell you all the local freights that are configured on the route. So Alcala 101 serves all these uh, different industries here. Uh, 0102, it'll tell you the car types like boxcar, uh, has capacity of four, the industry loads it, so you'll be taking in empties and removing loads. So it takes 48 hours to fill those four cars. Uh, Semex will do uh, 48 hours, 50 hoppers, uh, 48 hours, 50 uh, covered uh, two bay covered hoppers. Those are all your capacities. Uh, you know, ones like uh, Dixie Line Lumber here just takes a center beam flat car, produces empties. If you want to see where these are, uh, just hit transport. You know, and you'll go up to the industries. Uh, oh, I still have these on. So, so right control, yeah. So right control F8 turns your industry tags on, and this will just uh, tag the tracks for you and tell you which tracks are actually for that industry. Um, so I think this is up near. Oh, this looks like it's down near Colton. Yeah, so this is down near Colton. Uh, that's the Colton yard there. So like I said, I don't run any locals down this way. Not just that Colton or Bakersfield. Sorry, this is Bakersfield. Uh, this is BNSF Bakersfield, not Colton. My bad. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is BNSF Bakersfield. So this is on our dispatch window, a hobby. This is up, up around here. This is kind of where I am in this area. Um, so you can use uh, the dispatch here. So like I said, I'm building my trains out of Barstow. So if you want to see, you know, uh, which trains are, uh, oops, that was the wrong sub, a hobby sub. If you want to see, you know, which uh, trains are kind of near Barstow to run, we can go to Barstow. And uh, I'm getting slightly confused here. What am I looking at? A hobby. I'm used to using the external dispatcher, which is just way easier. Uh, there we go. All right. Uh, so say, you know, um, four on see what kind of industries are up here. Take a look around. Oh, there's an industry here. So we can fly over here. And we can see uh, these tracks are BOR. So then we can open up our industry, oops, industry configuration window, wrong one again. Um, and we're looking for, we can sort by incoming tag, BOR. There you go, so there's Borons, that's Borax, that's the industry. It's run by Alcal 0611. And I'll tell you kind of where they are. This one here also uh, runs um, Edwards Air Force Base and NAM, whatever that is, I can't remember. So we go local freight symbol, go Alcal 0611, Edwards Air Force Base, North American, and Borax. So these are the three. Um, I recommend this one if you're just starting running locals. It's actually a fairly fairly straightforward and fairly easy one to run. Uh, you do sometimes have to block the main line, I think, for running. I think it's Edwards you might have to block the main line for. So it can be kind of fun. Uh, but these industries are all fairly close together. So you have Boron here. Uh, this industry, once it comes back into view right here, that's NAM. It's North American. So it's very, very close. It's a small one. It only takes a few uh, covered hoppers. And then uh, Edwards is actually way over here. So you switch the two industries kind of at Boron and then just mainline run your train over to Edwards, switch out there, and then you're back to Barstow. So that's a fairly easy one to run. Uh, so like I said, don't try running all of them. You're, it's just not possible for one person to do. Uh, you know, you're only human. Unless, you know, you're running five instances or running eight on a server and driving all the trains at once, that'd be impressive. But you're probably not doing that. Uh, so one thing I do uh, to make my life a little easier, I have a spreadsheet here where I keep track of the locals I like to run. And even on here, I still don't really run all these. Like, I don't run YBK50 because it's a pain in the butt. I'll still build trains for it and send it up to the uh, service yard at Bakersfield, but I don't actually run the local. So uh, that one's called the Edison local. There's actually a scenario for it, too. And yeah, it's um, fun. Let's put it that way. Uh, so here I, I can see all my different trains. So we were just talking about Alcalo 611. I can uh, hit that. See, yep, industry, EDW, NAM, BOR. I also have my industries in the order here. I want to build the train. Uh, every now and then I forget which actual end is supposed to go on the head end. Alcalo, so let's take a look at 0641 for a second. Oops, no, show me that one. 
I think I do it this at the head end of the locomotive and this at the tail end. Or it might be vice versa. I can't remember. I'd have to take a look at the industries again. But you'll get to know as you run the routes what order you actually want your switch list in. Um, and running it will tell you that too. It'll produce a switch list for you. I might show you that later if I remember. Uh, but that way, like, uh, you know, it just gets a lot easier. If you're running trains in the right order. Watch, let me look at 0611 again. Because I know... Yeah, okay, so one goes on the head end. Because I know with uh, Boron... I uh, put all the hoppers on the back for Boron, or all the cars for Boron at the back, and I pull them off first, do a runner, and uh, shunt them into the siding at Boron, uh, pull out the empties, grab those, and shove them back in. So, uh, yeah, so whatever I have number one here, though, that goes on my head end power for these trains. But anyway, so I have this spreadsheet made up, um, and then I can do local style, so not ready means it's uh, still being built. I haven't done anything with it. Barso, ready to be sorted means I've uh, got all the cars through the initial hump, but it hasn't been sorted yet. Um, ready to set out means the train's built and ready to go to the service yard, or if the service yard's Barso, it's actually ready to go. Uh, at service yard means it's at the uh, yard it gets served from. So, for example, these uh, two trains here, or three trains, two trains, should be a third for Victorville down here. Yeah. I have three trains that get served out of Victorville. So those would be ones where I sit at service yard. That means I've sent the train to Victorville. So what I do, like, so for example, on my Victorville yard, clear where it's Victorville, I'll build all three of these trains at Barstow, and I'll just send all three of them together up to Victorville. Um, actually, I might send that one on its own, just because if I recall, that's actually a really long train. Uh, but I know these two at least. I send those two together up to Victorville, and then I just work out of Victorville for a while running those two locals. Those ones are fun to run too. The ones out of Victorville are good. But Victorville's on the Cajon sub, so if you don't have that uh, add on, you're not going to have that. Uh, so at Service Yard, uh, there was I ready to set out. Uh, M route to Service Yard, so that's so just I know that I've sent the train M route to the Service Yard. That's handy if you know I'm sending a train way the heck up to uh, Bakersfield up here because it's going to take a while to make its way all through all this going all the way up to Bakersfield so that's a uh, good long it's over 100 mile run and then it's really really slow through the entire Mojave subdivision so it takes trains quite a while to get up there uh, road service yard at service location yep uh and then return from service location and route to yard. So, uh, at service location is if I've actually out and the train is running at its service location. Sometimes I'll just leave trains on sidings on industries or whatever. And I won't run the entire local at the same time. So that's where I'll just update that. Be like, yeah, if you're looking for that train, guess what? It's at the industries you're supposed to be serving. Or some random siding somewhere and then I'll have to go find it. Lots of fun. And then return from service location and route to yard. So this is where they're coming back. Um, I have all the pickups and they're heading back. You know, so this would be either back to Victorville or back to Barstow or, or whatever. Just helps me keep track of uh, where I am for all the trains. And then, of course, you can sort them by industries, uh, industry names if you put them in. I started populating the industry names and just decided I didn't care. Sort by train, which is really handy. Um, so again, sort by the yard they're served out of, which is also handy. Uh, whoops. I don't think I've ever actually run anything out of Mojave. Yeah, Lot 53 runs out of Mojave. Might run that train once. Like I said, I mean, at the end of the day, you're the, like even running this many locals as one person's a heck of a task. YBK50 will take you a few hours just on its own. Um, yeah. So, uh, one thing I recommend if you're uh, looking to, you know, do some of the prototypical stuff like this. Uh, there's this book here, Southern California Local Freight Trains 2015 2016, uh, compiled by Charles uh, Ferrix here. Really cool book. It's uh, mostly designed for uh, rail fanning, uh, you know, for people who chase trains around and photograph them and that. But it, it goes through and it just gives kind of a, a high level overview of a whole bunch of locals that run out of Southern California. So just uh, flipping through here, like on page 23, talks about uh, the locals out of Barstow. So like the first entry here is for uh, Elcal 0611, which is the Boron local that we were just talking about. Um, now a few things are I should point out. Um, some of the, the these are the 
train tags that are running are, are more or less uh, very, very prototypical. I know on my own list, I based it somewhat on the one from the depot server. Um, so they run theirs a little different to be a little more efficient. I can't remember this. Uh, so the Boron Loco, uh, which is Alcohol 611, I'm not sure if it actually serves Edwards Air Force Base or not, but it's tagged like this in the game. Uh, this one here does absolutely serve Borax. Uh, so it, it might, I, I'm not sure. Uh, the book doesn't go into that much detail, but for uh, running prototypical, I mean, it's pretty, pretty close. Uh, so like I said, uh, pick a few trains you want to run. Uh, you know, start with some simple stuff and uh, expand from there. It's going to take you a while to build the trains anyway. Uh, so yeah, uh, so the next part here, I will go over actually getting trains into the yard, uh, using the hump controller to build them, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Alright, this is where this starts to get kind of fun. So we're going to use our hump yard to initially sort our trains into uh, a more manageable set that we can deal with. Uh, so we're going to use it basically to, to, to break up our incoming manifests. Uh, so we got some manifests over here into their individual local trains. So you need to be in range of a hump controller, so you have to be pretty close to it. So this is the hump controller area at Barstow. Uh, hit control F6. And what I've done is I've created one called locals initial sort. And this is where I take my incoming manifest freight run them over the hump yard, and sort them initially into their individual constituent trains. Uh, so these here are all the locals I might want to run, and again, I, I don't always run them all, you know, I, I kind of pick and choose. Uh, but each local goes on its own track. Uh, and depending, remember, said that your tracks near the center of your bowl are longer than the ones uh, towards the outside. Uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, so two things I've done here, uh, you got thir uh, there, so I'm populating, sorry, uh, 13 trains here, and then 14 and 15. I have one here that's blank, and this means that anything that is not covered by any of my other tracks is going to end up on that track. So if we go over here, and I turn on my uh, railcar destinations, we can see that's uh, Lock 53, uh, RSWI 0091, blah, blah, blah. Uh, go down here, YBK50. Yeah, so I'm not. I'm actually not running YBK50 on mine because I hate running the Edison local. It's a pain in the arse. Uh, YRYR, uh, anything going to San Bernardino, I don't care about. Uh, so on and so forth. Because I just have my inbound manifest enabled uh, for everything. So those are all ones I'm not running. So because they are not covered by any of the other uh, tracks in my hump controller, they just end up on this track, and then I just delete them. I really don't care. They just get deleted. Uh, the other one I did is none. Um, that's specific. I actually typed in N O N E in there, and what ends up on the none track are my caboose, because on the actual trains they are literally tagged none. So that's my caboose track, and I just fill it with caboose, just for fun. It's your railroad. You can do what you want. I like filling it with caboose, because uh, yeah, here we see another one, right? Caboose tag none. Uh, when you're making up this list, uh, you just type these in, and these are all uh, just the actual locals, because on our manifest, uh, you see here, all the locals have two tags. It'll be, you know, the first is the train, the second is the industry. You can use either one in your hump yard. We will use the other ones uh, for the uh, other tags, but first, we want to hump these trains. So I'll just go over really brief some humping operations. Uh, so this is one part where you can make the AI work for you. So we want to hump trains. Uh, you can use either your hump engines here that are stuck in Barso, or you can use the power that's already on the train. I tend to use the hump engines, and then I either just uh, take the power off the train and uh, get rid of it or uh, shove it on another track sometimes. So I just have a nice stockpile of engines to attach to outbounds. But again, I mean, the beauty of Run 8 is you can spawn anything at any time you want, so you don't even have to do that. But we're going to use our hump engines here, and we're just going to send them to the other end of the yard, which is really easy. So we click on this. AI yeah, recruit. There we go. Let's just check our switch alignments. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, let's change this one. 
or so that's the switch here do that and we will do that actually that one's fine we can leave that uh, that switch is switched against the train there so if we run all the way out here I thought it's gonna run out on this track which is actually good uh, so that one's not switched against the train this one's switched against okay so those engines are gonna run they're gonna stop uh, up here somewhere So run down and then we'll just tell these guys, yeah, relinquish the train when you stop it. And we'll just take over those engines. Uh, something else we're going to check is we're going to hit our F1 menu. And we're going to do uh, slow speed uses current speed, make sure that's off. It's designed for humping, not as a cruise control. Slow speed fixed value, 2.7 miles per hour. That's good. Uh, sometimes you can get away with doing three. Uh, you can encounter problems. So if you're multiplayer, absolutely do not do three. Uh, I set it 2.7 because that's the least amount of issues, at least for the Barstow hump yard. Um, at Cajon, or sorry, not Cajon, at uh, Colton, um, I know some people go as low as two or 2.5. So we want to make sure that's set. Uh, next thing we're going to do, so we're going to, which train should we hump first here? Does it really matter? Eh, it doesn't really matter. We can do either one. We'll hump this train here first. This is the last one that came in. Uh, so I think this one's still controlled by AI. It is. Get the AI to relinquish this train. Take over. And we are... We're going to pull the power off it. Let's go back to our head end. Close the angle cocks, because we don't want the emergency brakes kicking in. Open the uncoupler. Helps if you take the parking brakes off. Stand between tracks so we don't get killed. Uh, or some parking brake released. 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 There we go. Alright. So like I said, at this point you can decide uh, whether or not you want to keep these engines around to shove them on different siding to put on later trains. Uh, just for expediency's sake, we're just gonna we're just gonna nuke them. Uh, this is a long train. We might not be able to do it with two engines. I mean, it should be able to. All right, we're just going to do the exact same thing on this side. Here, we can actually blow the air brakes on the train, though. Oh, we need to take over this train again. There we go. So angle cock closed. We'll leave this one open because we're going to bleed the air from that uh, in a minute. So it's okay if we blow the air on it. Uh, what was I doing here? Set as lead unit. Released. Released. Alright, so we just finished humping our train. I stored the locomotives over here. Uh, shut off the hump controller as soon as all the rail cars are past their turnouts. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is make sure you keep your kind of dump siding cleared out because uh, you're going to be throwing a lot of rail cars there, so it's just going to stack up. And quote unquote, bad things happen when you start blocking these turnouts with rail cars. It creates a heck of a mess, kind of hard to uh, 
got rid of. So we're just going to wait for these cars to all go down here and stop moving. Uh, I spend some of my time just cleaning up the rest of the mess, keep trains moving here, though it looks like I still got some not going anywhere. Uh, that one should be fine. I can still send it through. going. This one needs to cross over to, where's that train? It's right there. Okay, that's fine. This one needs to cross over to that track. Uh, which will wait till that train comes in. That's fine. It can stay there for a bit. The next part of this is going to be rearranging these cars here uh, and this is one part that I do sort of manually cheat with uh, you can do it 100% uh, manually by grabbing uh, you'll notice that there's a couple of locomotives sitting down here those can be your uh, locomotives uh, you use to rearrange this thing uh, but I do this part using the uh, train spawning window just because it's a lot faster and a lot easier but right now, what we have is all the rail cars on a given uh, hump yard track here are all for the same kind of local. So, for example, this track here, every rail car is for Alcal 1161. Doesn't matter what the industries are, it's all for Alcal 1161. Uh, likewise, that 041, uh, what's this one here, is a 101, so on and so forth. All the way down then, of course, we just have our kind of dump track here, which we'll just delete stuff from that track, because we don't care. So the next part of this is rearranging these cars by car type. So you get all the hoppers together, all the tank cars together, etc., etc. Um, and like I said, you can do it manually by pulling and shunting trains. Or the way I do it is I take the train. Uh, doesn't really matter which direction you do it from, but take your train, let's clear that. Copy player train, and you're going to have this uh, list here. Rearrange them so you have all the same type of rail cars together. That's C14 hopper, goes down there. Tank, tank, down there. Uh, oh, I'm going to pull a C14 hopper down there. That's just a normal, no, that's a C14 hopper. Sometimes this thing is a little weird. You'll click on something and it'll grab something else. Hopper, hopper, tank car, another normal hopper. I think these hoppers should be up here. You can just hold down shift to multi-select there. So we have all the hoppers, uh, tank car, that should be down here. C14 hoppers and tank cars all together. Make sure you do that first and then you're going to delete that whole train. Then you're going to pull this window up again, place the train, and just put it back. And there, the whole train's arranged. And we are going to do that for every train on here. And like I said, you can do this manually if you want. There's uh, no reason why you can't. It just takes a really long time. And it's way more expedient doing it this way. Especially since a lot of these are going to have to be rehumped. Clear, copy, uh, covered hopper. Sorry, let's just take a bunch of these, move them down. Covered hopper, covered hopper. Go down there, gondola. Any more gondolas? Yep, one, two gondolas. And like I said, it doesn't matter what order you do these in, um, as long as all cars of the same type are together. Uh, there we go. If you miss one, it's not the end of the world. You can always go back and redo it. Am I missing something? Like gondola, hopper, boxcar, C14s. There we go. There's all right. So that should be fine there. Uh, which train did I just do? This one. Place train. 
So make sure you place them far enough back that you leave these turnouts here empty. And the other reason I say copy it before you delete the train is so that if you accidentally or if you just get look kind of click happy and then delete the train before you actually copy it, you're not uh, you're not missing a whole train. Any more center beams, two center beams. together. All right. Uh, oh, those are all hoppers. All right, that's good. So that one can just stay there. Nifty. Boxcar, 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 boxcar. Boxcars. No, not boxcar. You're a boxcar. There we go. Two tanks. Three first center beam. Boxcars, tanks. Just break. Mm, those all look like tank cars. Yep. So that one's fine. Don't need to do it. Clear, copy, refers, tank, oh, that one's easy. Refers and tanks. Oh. And we had one random tank car not in here. So that was a case where not all the cars uh, got into, uh, or they didn't all couple with each other. Oops, I do the right train. And I'm in that position where I actually forget which trains are what. Did I delete the wrong one? My steam pack. Hmm. Now I confuse myself. Anyway, whatever. Uh, yeah, this is the track I was working on here. That's fine. Drill and tank. PFC. Oh, whatever. It's going to be easy to see if I had the right... Uh, train here. Which train is this? This is 916J. It's not for 916J. Yeah, okay. So, sorry, train. That's right. We can pick that one up later. No big deal. Yeah, so that's one of the only dangers is uh, you can sort of confuse yourself here if you're not careful. Uh, let's relinquish that. Clear, copy. Hopper, copper, hopper. Up there, there we go. That was easy. All right. Anyway, so I'm not going to go through and uh, do all, do the rest of them there, but you get the idea. Uh, so I'll just delete these for now. The point being is you want uh, all the cars of the same type together. And uh, so the next stage uh, is we're going to rehump trains. And we rehump them to sort them into our switch list, basically. So, uh, actually, let's just pick a train here. Which train's got kind of a mix of stuff? Uh, yeah, this one here's good. Which train is this? This one is Elkel 0103. So, what you'd, you'd actually do is you drag every single one of those trains back into your hump yard. Uh, you can do it manually or you can have the AI do it or you can uh, just kind of click it, copy and paste it back into the hump yard. Uh, so there's one thing I use this yard here for sometimes is I'll grab these locomotives down there, those two trim engines, uh, put trains back in here and then on my spreadsheet, uh, if we go back to that, uh, that's where I go ready to be sorted. Uh, if they're sitting here and they're ready to be sorted, if they're in there or in the yard back there. Uh, anyway, which train are we doing? Elkel. Oh, we can do 0041. Yeah, we can do 0041. 1116. Uh, anyway, 
right, so let's go back here. Now I have these arranged to do a couple of trains at once. So for example, if we want to do 0041, I'd use this switch list. And then this one here, I can do ALCO 0101 and 0041 together. Um, and that just divides them into their individual locals and puts them in order. And then same here, so this is ALCO 0611, 0102, and 1161. Can hump all them together. Uh, 0103 has got a lot of industry, so it's done by itself. Um, same with this one here. Or not a lot of industries, a lot of rail cars on that one. Uh, this one here is only the two because it's the same thing. So yeah. Uh, so what I'll do here is I'll just quickly copy and paste these back there. Like I said, I, I personally enjoy uh, moving them out and then uh, driving the train and pulling them back into this yard. So it's, it's a long process. I like I, said, I, won't, I won't go through the whole thing on here. I'll just copy and paste a couple of these in. All right, so just for expediency's sake, I did some copy pasting trains instead of uh, actually grabbing a locomotive and pulling them over. Uh, so here we have two of our sorted locals. Uh, so these were the ones uh, after I rearranged the cars to put all the same car types together. Uh, we have Alcal, or sorry, Arcal uh, 0041 and Alcal, uh, what's the one back here? Alcal 0101. Um, and again, you can see for each in, each train, uh, all the cars are together. And through my home pensions on the back. And the reason I have these trains together is because over my home controller, these are two I'm sorting together. So all of one train ends up on tracks 102 to 106. All of the other train ends up on tracks 108 to 114. And this order that they end up in here is the same uh, on my spreadsheets. So, uh, oh, it just so happens these are two of the Victorville trains. So if we go El Cal 101, you see uh, HWL OMYSCC, MC SPM, HWL OMYSCC, MC SPM, same order on here. Um, and that way the trains will be in the right order for actually shunting out the industries. So in this case, uh, it's basically the exact same thing we do. I uh, got the train, and we are. Uh, let's just make sure the air brakes are bled. There we go. And we're just going to hump this train again. Yeah, make sure our switches are set. This won't be so wrong. It's important uh, when you do this step, you have to clear out your hump yard again. So the idea is after you hump, uh, I usually do two to three manifests. I find that creates enough cars to create the uh, local trains. Any more than that, you start getting too many rail cars uh, for a local. Uh, I mean, you start exceeding your industry capacity. So two to three, um, then I clear it out. Uh, and because the generation is a little random, you may actually not end up with enough cars uh, for any given local. So in that case, that's when I just store them on, uh, you know, you can just store them on these tracks here. Uh, and then uh, when you get enough cars again, you can grab them, connect them to one on uh, these tracks that you're storing, and then drag them back into your hump yard to rehump them. And again, it's up to you if you want to do all that manually or if you just want to do the uh, quick copy paste method. Um, I do a combination of both depending on what kind of mood I'm in. I mean, sometimes I just don't feel like pulling three or four locals back into the yard and, you know, if I actually want to go run some, uh, then I'll kind of use the cut and paste method, but uh, your choice. Again, it's your railroad. Do what you want. I did sound switch, right? Yeah. So this one here should hump fairly quickly. I think this train's a lot lighter too. Let's wait on this. Yeah, 2200. I still got all three locomotives on there. Unnecessary for a train this long, but that's okay. Turns the speed control on. Always remember to turn that off when you're done. I forgot that when I was moving my locomotives uh, back to this track here, and I'm sitting there trying to figure out why in run two going downhill they were barely exceeding 10 miles per hour. Kill power there. Going too fast. Slow. There we go. Uh, 
So make sure you have your right one selected. If you don't, again, it makes a mess. So the reason I, I never really explained it, why we put all the cars together is because on industries, you're nine out of 10 gonna be shoving all cars uh, on multi-track industries. You're gonna be shoving all cars of the same type on a single track. Uh, so there's no point in, uh, so if you do them separately, uh, you're gonna be doing a whole ton of cutting a train. Um, you know, seesaws back and forth, back and forth to shunt, you know, different cars on different tracks and go back, grab another one, go back to the same track you were just on. Like it, it's, uh, highly inefficient, a colossal PITA. So we put them all together. So that way, like for example, when we actually run this one out to uh, the industry, our, uh, whichever industry RSV is, I can't remember off the top of my head. We're just uh, on our local train, we'll have the entire cut of covered hoppers here. We'll all be together. So we just grab that whole cut and shove them all on the one track. And like I said, you can uh, do that manually in the hump yard or sorry, in your yard here, putting them all together if you want. I don't, because uh, especially for really long trains, like when you start getting into you know, 20, 25 rail cars, uh, that would just take you forever. Give me fun multiplayer, you know, sure if you're taking a couple hours going back and forth with somebody else, but uh, if you actually want to run the locals, uh, yeah, your choice. So these ones here are sorting based on industry tag. So they're gonna sort based on uh, RSV. Uh, so these two should go to the same location. MRP here will go somewhere else. And then you see we're back to RSV. So RSV, like the boxcar is probably going on one track. The uh, hopper there, the open hopper will go on, one, on a different track. And uh, probably your covered hoppers here will all go on another track. But when we're done this sort, all cars for a train, uh, well actually they won't be all together, but they'll be on separate tracks for the industry, but then it just comes down to uh, building your local in the yard and putting it back together. And I'll show you kind of my method of doing that too. Again, you can do it all manually, uh, or you can do it the quick and dirty way, uh, which is also kind of something I do. Usually the only full manual things I do are humping trains and then dragging them from the hump yard back into the uh, arrival yard. Uh, so I'll pause the video here again while I'm pumping trains, and uh, yeah. Slow speed control off. I've said multiple times, your railroad, you want to go 45 through a freight yard, feel free. No one's going to stop you. You're not going to fail any activities. You're not going to, scenario's not going to end in a failure. leave that train there for now and unfortunately uh, watch well, tank that we don't have to wait for these to all slide down to the end there uh, we do for this one because these are all going not sure you don't but it's easier if you do uh, so if this train stopped here, why is this train stopped? Oh, right, because I needed to cross over to this line. Uh, that'll be fine. Do that. There we go. Let's get that train out of here. And 
sure what else should be good. Okay. Yep. Like I said, I'm pumping long trains, I just go and play train dispatcher for a while. Okay. So normally I, I'd wait until all these are down to the end of the tracks, but you actually have no need to. So, but these are our trains, and they're now in the right order. So if we go here, we can see this is LCAL 0101, and this is for HWL. Actually, let me shut off the hump controller. I just remember to turn this off. So for LCAL 0101, the first one should be HWL, second should be OMY, third should be SCC, and that will be the exact order these are in here. So HWL, uh, OMY, SCC. So now you build your local train. Uh, and again, you can do that. Uh, you can grab, you know, some of your trim locomotives from down there, and you can build it manually on the departure tracks. Uh, I usually do that. Uh, you can just see saw your way back and forth through uh, the end of the hump yard there, grab the whole train. Uh, but just for expediency's sake, I'll just do it uh, kind of the uh, using the train thingy here. And I'll show you, you know, real quick and dirty. So you click that. Yeah, I was going to say that should stop. And we are going to go copy player train into stored units. And we'll just delete it. Grab that one. Copy. And move that over into stored units. And just kind of repeat this process for because remember anytime you copy it it remembers the tags it remembers uh, the status of the thing and we got two of them here so that's fine so we'll copy that take that into stored units delete copy that one because these are for the same industry copy that into stored units and I think I left a one track gap between these trains Left on track out there just to make life easy. So we'll grab those, copy them. Whoops. Oops, sorry. I'm just finger fumbling my keyboard now. Delete, and then we'll do the same thing with this one. This one be this one, so it looks like I got rail cars for nothing for those industries. Interesting. Yeah, and that's why I usually do two or three locals. This this was made up from uh, the remnants of one and another one. Uh, but you can see here, like I've got two tracks here that should have been industry cars, but don't. Uh, and then we have a whole bunch for this one. Should be our last one from here. Yep. So we'll find a departure track to shove this train on. So we're going to take everything here, clear that side. Like I said, this can be done all manually. And there you go. There's two locals. RKL0041 and LKL0101. Uh, nope, should be in order. I got one car here that's. Hmm. Apparently, I got one stray on this side. Not sure why. LKL101. And 0401. Oh, I got two strays. Oh, maybe just one. Yeah, okay. So apparently I got one stray. It's on this end. That's easy to fix. Copy player train. That's covered hopper. Yeah, we'll just slide her down there. I probably just messed up. I usually don't uh, place these trains by copy and paste, so I probably just messed, messed that up somewhere. Oh, just did the exact same thing. Huh. 
That's weird. Okay, I'm not 100% sure why that's happening, but that's all right. You get the idea. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so these are uh, two trains now in order. You'll have, so these are your cars going to HWL, they're together. Your cars going to SCC, well, there's only one, it's together. All your cars going to MCC, they're all together by type. So you got your two MCC hoppers, MCC tanks. Cars going to SPM, covered hoppers, they're together. And then all your cars going to RSV, uh, which will be different types. There's another stray hopper. I must have forgot to copy some hoppers. Uh, or I screwed up when I arranged them the first time, that's a possibility. Uh, so if you do it properly, your car is going to RSV, uh, all the covered hoppers should be together like they are here. Uh, if we go down here, these should be going, well, all these things are going to RSV. Uh, yep, that's good. Uh, U76, one tank car, MRP, AFG, and OMY. So that's two locals. So now what you can do is you grab some power. Uh, so these are both served out of Victorville. So these actually go down to the yard at Victorville, which is down here, outside the Semex plant. Oops, turn off those. This is the yard at Victorville. So this is where those will go. Um, and then you'll run them out to their industries. Uh, there's uh, one industry up that way. Um, this here's uh, Semex, so anything going through Semex. Uh, another fun local is this one here. This is the uh, Semex Quarry train. The Semex Quarry is actually way up there. And a uh, train just literally takes filled cars from the quarry, puts them down here, and another one takes the empties from here and takes them back to the quarry. That's always kind of a fun one to do. Uh, but most of the other industries are located uh, down and around this way and uh, following up there. I'll turn on industry tracks. We should see some of them around here. Yeah, so there's U76 there. Um, and a bunch more are located uh, further up that way. And those are the two trains that you will run for. Ah, sorry. Parrot and stuff. Bad parrot. Those are the two trains you should run. Uh, for the Victor Villiard. Uh, so let's hop back to Barstow. Yeah, and then putting power on that train, you can decide whether or not you want to do it uh, just through the train spawning thing, or if you actually want to grab some locals and send it down. But the idea is then once you get this down to Victorville, uh, you will break these two trains into their respective locals and go run and shunt one at a time and then uh, bring the empties back here. Uh, so that's basically my method for building local freights from inbound uh, manifests. And like I said, you can do as much of it uh, manually as you want, or you could, other than uh, actually sorting it by tag with the hump yard, uh, you could do it all through. Uh, what's wrong window? You could all uh, it all through this window if you really, really wanted to. So uh, totally up to you. Uh, it's the beauty of run eight. It's a sandbox. You can run it how you want. Hope uh, you found this useful and uh, help some people out. Have fun.